we now look at just some example of the I, of the IDs that we see in the PD um, in the physical downlink control channel and the and the messages in the in the shared channel. So we have a mobile and we have a base station and we will look at just just uh, recap some of the identities that we'll see and what what's the kind of Mac packet when we look at the process of a mobile creating an RRC connection with the base station. So the mobile, when it comes in and, and sits in the base station, the very first thing it will decode after it has decoded the um, the 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 after it's synchronized to this to the cell by looking at the primary synchronization and the secondary synchronization signal is is the MIB. The MIB is uh, sent independently in the physical downlink broadcast channel. So this is where the MIB is. So you don't uh, you don't need to look anything in the in the uh, common control channel or in the uh, SCH, it's got a separate channel for it. Then the mobile goes ahead and starts listening to these system information uh, broadcast messages. And these are present in the, uh, these are present in the PDSCH and the identity which is used is the SIRNTI. So, so the mobile starts trying, starts trying to listen to the SIRNTI to find out actually where what are these uh, where are these system information elements in there um, the, the, the SIBs have a periodicity to them for example SIB1 is sent every 20 milliseconds and but it changes every 80 milliseconds so so uh, so in the in the time domain you basically have if I have SFN uh, if I have SFN 0 1 2 3 Four and so on. So SFN zero, SFN two, SFN four. These all have SIB two in them. Um, however, uh, sorry, SIB one in them. However, there will be a new value. There can be a new value in of of SIB two in 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 sub SFN zero or SFN eight, and then so on. So basically, SFN mod eight. As may contain when that's equal to zero may contain a new SIP two. So this can be a new SIP one. So this can be SIP one star if what was being sent here was SIP one was the original SIP. So, so it can change every 80 milliseconds, but it is repeated um, essentially uh, four times every every 20 milliseconds in this 80 milliseconds where where it could go ahead and change. So what um, there are further SIP2 all the way up to SIP5 that are needed for a mobile to find out if it can camp in a particular cell just to look at what kind of information is present in this in these MIBs and SIPs. So your MIB has your downlink channel bandwidth and, uh, and your, uh, your uh, system frame number. Your SIB1 has your mobile operator's identity, PLMN ID. It has something called tracking area code, which is, which is something we will cover when we look at, uh, at power savings and, and, and idle mode in the mobile. Um, it, it has other cell selection parameters. It has frequency bands. So, so these are all kind of important information that the mobile needs to know before it can try to attempt to transmit. So it needs to know its operator. So the PLMN ID, uh, am I actually, uh, if I am a Vodafone customer, is this really Vodafone? So can I really transmit in this cell? And if it sees that the PLMN ID is Vodafone, then it'll go ahead and transmit. Otherwise, it will not, not transmit. Um, SIP2 has information about access class barring and this is used uh, during congestion to try to kind of if there's an earthquake for example what uh, the, the, the cell will broadcast and say nobody other than emergency responders are allowed to use this channel or nobody other than the mobiles operators own uh, people who are fixing the networks are allowed to use this channel um, so that that's again kind of important information that uh, that the mobile knows whether it is allowed to even transmit. So at least MIB, SIB1, SIB2 that, that the mobile then needs to know to figure out whether um, it's, uh, it, it should transmit. In addition, there are the SIB3, 4, and 5 provide other parameters about what 
power level you you should be receiving at if you, if if you want to sit in the cell and transmit in the cell and also information about neighbor cells when you're trying to move so so the, these are kind of parameters which are used in something called um, cell reselection and we, we will cover cell reselection in some of the uh, later lectures when, when we start looking at mobility. So how does a mobile determine that it will go from one base station to it that it's gone far enough from one base station and then it has actually should be now listening to this base station whereas when it was on this side it was listening to, to this one. So this whole process of moving from one cell to another cell is called cell reselection and parameters for cell reselection and selection are provided in SIP uh, 3 onwards to, to 5. Um, so having kind of looked at the broad kind of structure of the SIBs, the mobile listens to the MIB, has listened to the SIBs and now it figures out it can really can transmit onto this cell. It goes ahead and sends a random access preamble and in the previous lectures when, when we had looked at it there are two values. The uh, there, there are two values that are important. One is the RA, RNTI, the random access radio network temporary identity, which is nothing but just the subframe ID in which the message is being sent. So, so this can be, for example, if the subframe ID was number four um, in, in that particular radio frame where it sent this preamble, the RA, RNTI is four. And then there is also something called the rapid, which was the uh, random access um, uh, preamble identity which is one of 64 values so it can go all the way from 0 to 63 so it, it picks up picks randomly a value and lets it sends 23 over the air and that's what the random access preamble that gets sent um, this is in the uplink in the downlink the random access response is sent and the identity which is in the PDCCH over here, this identity over here is RARNTI. It basically says, hey, that the number is four over here, and this will point to a particular place over here where that contains a random access response. And the random access response has got the rapid value, which we said was 23. So there is in here is the value 23, and it also says, okay when you should send your the next message so it provides the uplink grant it says all right you should be transmitting whatever four or five uh, um, subframes down from from where we are right now and that's when you should be transmitting in the particular uh, resource block so it gives that information and then it also provides a temporary identity which is the temporary cell identity. So this this is this will become the UE's radio level identity once the random access procedure is completed. So the random access response goes goes down to the mobile. The mobile then goes ahead and sends an RRC connection request. This connection request has an in the identity part of it, it fills it with a random number and then it says, hey, uh, the reason I want to make this connection is because I want to send a signaling messages. For example, I mean, I want to do a tracking area update or hey, I really have an IP packet and I want to go ahead and send a WhatsApp message to, 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 uh, to my friend over there. And so this is uh, mobile originated data. So, so Mehmet goes ahead, wants to talk to Aisha. He wants to say hi. He'll say, okay, this is actually for, for, for mobile originated data that I want to set up. In, and if there is an emergency, there is also a value for emergency. So you can set your emer establishment calls to emergency. And that's only when you're making, for example, a 115, I guess, in, in or 155, I think, in Europe and 911 in US. So, so you go ahead and the, this is what the RRC connection request information from the mobile gets sent up. Um, important thing to see here is this random number and that's the one that will enable if there were two people who had sent the same RAR and TI and the same uh, rapid that is the one that will help kind of resolve this. So once the mobile gets it it sends the RRC connection setup message and the identity that is provided in the uh, common control channel is actually the temporary CRNTI. So, so it, it 
so the, so the mobile went ahead and provided a temporary had had provided a temporary CRNTI to to the UE in the in the random access response, and that is the one that that it goes ahead and uses this time. And in the response itself, the 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 message itself that contains over here is this this whole thing over here. What it is saying is that actually over here I'm showing that it's a concatenation of three different Mac. Um, of Mac SDUs as these are called. The very first thing is, which is there in this uh, multiplex Mac packet, is the UE contention resolution identity, which is nothing but this entire message, your RRC connection request message being sent back to the mobile. So once the mobile sees this message and it sees, oh, actually the random number that is coming back to me is the same one that I generated, the mobile knows that, that, that it has been successfully received at the base station and nobody else and I'm the only person that the mobile is talking to and this temporary CRNTI that has been provided to me now is no longer temporary and that is my radio network temporary identity that I will use from here on with the base station. Um, in addition, there is the, the RRC connection setup message, which is, as we said, is having a logical channel ID of zero. And then there is, the, there is it can be that these two messages were not long enough to fit into um, whatever one or two resource blocks that have been provided over here. And, and hence, there can be some padding. To make the length turn out to be inte uh, integer number of resource blocks that are uh, that are configured or your resource block group as we said um, that have to be used uh, in the downlink and anything for a 20 megahertz your minimum resource block group has to be four so, if for, so, for, so this has to be for example four resource block that that needs to contain this this information um, keep but keep in mind this kind of message number a message number this is called message number one two three this message number three is is should be really a short message and and so the, the radio guys go ahead and optimize this message to be uh, to only contain very, very few fields over here because it has to be actually mirrored back to the mobile and and in the starting part the mobile is still uh, getting its radio set up it, it it hasn't kind of the 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 channel hasn't been estimated very well you can't use very high modulation schemes so you cannot fit in too many bits into a particular resource element um, and that's why the, the these messages are kept are kept pretty pretty short okay so this is the rrc connection setup message that is sent to the mobile and then the mobile goes ahead and send, sends a RRC connection setup complete. And this sequence of uh, one, two, three, four, five messages are actually essentially that th this part of it is your random access procedure is successful. And this is your first message after your random access procedure is successful. And this also sets up your RRC connection between the mobile and the base station so now the rrc connection is ready and to go once that's that's done sometime later on uh, during the attach procedure uh, the mme will go ahead and uh, send to through the mob through the enode b this authentication request message and how this authentication request message comes down is that in the in the PDCCH, the identity which is present is the CRNTI. So the mobile looks at it. This thing points somewhere over here, and we said the minimum is four of these uh, resource blocks, and it contains uh, important information. And over here, I'm just showing that that there are two things over here. The first part of it is that it is telling the mobile about timing advance and this is a Mac level information so so this is telling the mobile hey you're actually transmitting a little too early or a little too late so so start transmitting a little bit earlier so that your message gets to me so so the mobile's message gets to the e node b at the right time so so this is a timing advance parameter and lcid one over here is uh, basically 
saying that this is my SRB1 uh, signaling radio bearer 1 and that contains this NAS message for authentication request. So by the time the uh, authentication request is sent, um, of course, uh, security hasn't been set up over the air. So uh, this message is not going to be um, to be encrypted or uh, integrity protected. I mean, the encryption and integrity protection can only start after the, um, uh, the, the security negotiations as have occurred between the, the mobile and the E node B and also between the mobile and the, and the MME. So this is an example of the identities that are used in the uh, common control channel and how packets are sent in the uh, shared channel. Uh, 